So we continue our journey today with our bead strand, which many of you I know have. If you haven't yet gotten one, there are just a few left for visitors in the back after church if you'd like to get one. We started with the gold bead, right? We begin our prayers with God. We moved on to the bumpy bead and reflected on those bumpy places in our lives that God knows about and can certainly help us handle. We moved then on to the bead with the hole in it, that empty space, perhaps a time of silence that can, restain, can sustain our souls. And today we move on to the next bead, which looks like a rock, representing perhaps a stepping stone or a rock along the trail that we are on, both together and individually. This journey we're on, this traveling that we're doing together. I know many of you got to do some traveling this past summer. Met some of you off to wonderful places like France and even my home state of Alaska. I know others of you are planning trips in the near future. So we know a lot about taking trips and going on journeys in that way, don't we? But this morning I invite us to look at this passage from Isaiah again, which is also talking about a journey, but maybe a different kind, a more spiritual kind. Isaiah said, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. This messenger was delivering this news a long, long time ago, about 587 BC, maybe as early as 538 BC, but either way, that's a long time ago. This messenger had great news, and great news was needed, for the situation had been horrible for the people then. Their beautiful city, Jerusalem, had been conquered. The temple they loved so much had been destroyed, made into a pile of rubble. Many people had been sent far away into exile, far from home. It seemed like a horrible situation, and it was. A lot of, a lot of brokenness. And yet into the scene comes this messenger with great news. God has defeated the enemy. The exiles are going to come home very soon. And their beautiful city, now in ruins, is going to be rebuilt again. And the temple will rise up once again. And God's love and peace will be back in their lives, fully realized. All the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God, says the messenger. Everybody will experience this wonderful transformation that God is bringing. And the people's response to this messenger is how beautiful. How beautiful. Upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings this good news. Now, if you have a sense of humor like mine, I hope you don't, actually. You read passages like this and you say, how beautiful, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger? I mean, wouldn't you think it'd be how beautiful is his voice proclaiming this good news? Or how beautiful are his eyes so full of love for us? Or maybe even just the words themselves. Aren't those beautiful words? How beautiful those words are. But no, that's not what the Bible says. How beautiful are the feet of the messenger? And really, how beautiful are those feet? The messenger could not have traveled through the mountains long distances without those feet. Those of us who have trouble walking sometimes suddenly have a greater appreciation for how valuable our feet are. Without the messenger's feet, the good tidings would never have arrived to Jerusalem. 
In much the same way, the disciples, when they saw Jesus on Easter morning, were happy to see him. And they were told in Matthew that they took hold of his feet and worshiped him. So it may sound strange to you and me, and yet how precious and beautiful were Jesus' feet and the feet of the messenger who brought the good news so many years ago. We really don't know who that messenger was, this one who came to Jerusalem. Some scholars think it was a prophet, some think perhaps it was an angel. As you read further in the Bible, St. Paul kind of made a twist and interpreted it to mean the early Christian missionaries who delivered good news to the Gentiles. We don't know, but what we do know is that the messenger was bringing good news. And the response was, how beautiful. Everyone who heard the news burst into song. There were people, sentinels, posted along the edges, along the walls of the city of Jerusalem. And they were there to watch out for danger, to sound out the cry. And so they were there, they were watching, but they didn't see a threat. They saw and then heard this messenger bringing good news. And so these people keeping watch broke into song. How beautiful are the feet of this messenger. And the people within the city heard them singing for joy. Even the people there in the rubble heard this good news, and they too began to sing with joy. And so I wonder, how will you and I respond when we hear this good news? Maybe it depends on where we are in our own journey of faith. Psalm 25 says, Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness. That's the path we want to be on. We want to follow God's path. But it is hard sometimes, isn't it, to know which path to follow, which one is the one we're called to journey upon. As humans, we so often stumble and fall into other paths. But we can trust God to show us the right path to follow, the path of goodness and wholeness and even joy. For all the paths of Yahweh are steadfast love and faithfulness, the path of love and faithfulness. That's the one we want to be on. And that's the one that God can put us on. Sometimes we feel like we're in the rubble, don't we? Everything is going wrong. All we see is brokenness. And yet way back when, the people in the rubble who heard the watchmen singing for joy joined in. They heard it and were able to sing even amidst the rubble, even before their beautiful city was restored. Some of us may feel more like we're along the edges of the city, standing on those fortifications, able to look around, to see beyond the rubble, and to see what's coming. If that's where our journey has taken us so far, maybe we're in a position to be able to keep our eyes open and to see the good news when it comes, to see God working around us, and to sing for joy, to say how beautiful when we see that. And if we sing it loudly, and all of us who are watching sing it together, the people down in the rubble of the city will hear it too, and will also be able to join us in song. Maybe our journey has taken us a little further, not staying in the rubble, but moving away from the rubble to the ramparts of the city, or maybe even beyond. Maybe God has put us on a path that is leading us to share the good news by foot, to, sh to sing out the song of joy, maybe like a singing telegram, to deliver this good news to other people, maybe during mission trips, maybe just out in the world wherever we are. 
I think our response kind of depends on where we are in this path that God is showing to us. With God's help, we can stay on that path of wholeness and joy, whether we're in the rubble, along the walls keeping watch, or beyond traveling to other places. With God's help, on this journey together, we can sing for joy.